that music come across screaming loud or is it okay? Also, if you're watching this on Facebook, if you leave a comment, I'm wondering if it'll show up on my stream. I got two assignments for you right off the bat, ladies and gentlemen of the Naugatuck Valley. Number one, is that music too loud? Happy New Year. That worked. Happy New Year. Oh, my overlay's messed up, though. Thank you, Lisa Beth. Same to you. Oh, but it can be seen on, on YouTube. Huh. Fascinating. All right, my name is Eugene Driscoll. I'm going to shut up the music right now. Uh, I'm a valleyindie.org, which is a nonprofit online news site covering Ansonia, Derby, and Seymour. Occasionally Shelton. Hey, I'll throw an Oxford story out there if I can. But I'm one man, ladies and gentlemen. Just one man. Happy New Year to everybody. Kevin, one of the oldest OG Valley Indie supporter. Happy New Year to you, Kevin. Thanks for your support uh, over the years for always being there for the Valley Indie. So I took a week off last week, and I've been messing around with StreamYard, which is a, I don't know, Zoom Zoom with more colors, I guess. Is that how I is that how I describe it? That's how I'm gonna describe it. There's too much going on. How do I get Kevin out of here now? Sorry, Kevin, no offense. But uh anyway, I thought this in the in the new year, 2023, I'd like to try to do more StreamYard live broadcasts and things like that with various newsmakers and all that good stuff. Because I haven't done the Valley Indie podcast in a while just because did I mention I'm only one man? So this is sort of a, a test, test uh, run of the old StreamYard. And I'll try not to say uh, 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 too much, but I'm not going to make any promises. It was a busy week in Valley News while we were away. I apologize, but, uh, you know, took time off to be with the family. Of course, my vacation has ended with son flu, daughter flu, wife flu, me, not yet, no flu. I am pretty good for whatever reason with not encountering the various viruses that enter my domicile over the last couple of years, if you know what I mean. I don't want to like say anything because maybe YouTube will, yeah, YouTube's weird with what words you say apparently, but apparently Coors Light, Coors Light cures what ails you. So I got that going for me. Does anybody know I live in Derby? Am I supposed to put out my garbage tonight, city of Derby? I have no idea. I did see, all right, let's, let's try an experiment right here. I'm going to try to share my screen with you. Kevin says uh, the volume is good. Oh, thanks, Kevin. What if I play like this music? How does is, is this, does the music come across really loud? If you're wearing headphones right now, you might want to turn down your volume. I've tried this uh, previously and had issues, but so I can barely hear that on my end. That's the bad slugs ride the dinosaur. I'm just wondering if that blows out your speakers. Just in case it is, I'll turn it off. Or is it low? But uh, again, Kevin, thanks for your help. So what was I talking about? Oh yeah, let's see if I can share my screen here. I'm gonna do the present thing. Now this is different. I'm gonna go to the Chrome tab, City of Derby. Let's read what's going on. City of Derby, trash and recycling pickup. Okay, so here it is right here. Let's see if I can make sense of this. This always confuses me. There are no trash or recycle pickups on the following national holidays. Therefore, pickups will be delayed one day. Okay, so today, I usually put out my garbage, but today's a holiday. And if I read up, therefore, pickups will be delayed one day. So I am not putting out my garbage tonight, okay? I like feeling really smug when I'm the only person that gets the trash thing right in my neighborhood. Makes me feel good. So then I'm gonna stop sharing that, right? You guys can all see that, Hope. I'm going to go back to the stream yard. Don't have any new comments. Okay. The other thing I'm wondering, okay, so Facebook works. I am getting comments from Facebook. That's good. The other thing I want to ask people, you see across the bottom there, youtube.com slash at Valley Indy. That's, guess what? That's the YouTube address. I'm trying to see if we can monetize our YouTube page because why not? Lord knows I'm surprised to be here in 2023. I'd like to be here in 2024. All my grant cycles are up this Publication is supported by reader donations and various foundations such as the Valley Community Foundation, Catherine Matthews Foundation, the Community Foundation for Greater New Haven, and then we receive support from the Online Journalism Project. They have some laugh, leftover uh, change they find in their couch and they throw it to keep the Valley Indy going. 
But uh, one thing I want to do is we have like 700 subscribers on YouTube. If I hit a thousand, and then I have to get a lot of watch time. I need a lot of watch time on YouTube. So maybe what I'll try in 2023 to hit that watch time is start doing live broadcasts like this and interviews and perhaps political debate debates. Cause I think it's, is it a, an election year coming up? I don't even know. Maybe do that on YouTube to get those watch hours I need. And maybe the Valley Indy can have another little source of revenue. We were at one point we, we did like make 25 cents maybe a month off YouTube, but then one of those Paul brothers, I don't know which one it was, Jake or Logan did something and then they changed all the rules. And of course it, like everything, it, it hurt local news. So that's the guard. Oh, I know in the city of Derby, let's try this again so I can practice this. I'm gonna share the screen. Christmas tree, right? My Christmas tree is uh, about ready to set a flame in my living room. If, you're, if you live in Derby, and I probably should go like this, right? Fresh Christmas trees are not eligible for the weekly curbside pickup. No, nope, you can't just throw it out with the regular trash. Don't try putting it in your recycling. I did that once, bad move. However, Derby Public Works, they're over there on Coon Hollow Road, offers a special curbside collection in the month of January, which is really cool. Just place the Christmas tree on the curb in front of your house and it will be picked up automatically. If I did more show prep for this particular practice episode, longer than 10 minutes, I would be able to tell you what the rules are in Ansonia and Seymour, but whatever, ask Mayor Cassetti. Mayor Cassetti knows. Speaking of which, does that come across? I actually have a Mayor Cassetti drop somewhere. Oh, it's not, it's not Cardiff. That's my other podcast. It's not Quasimodo from the evil that men do. It's not Bill Burr saying the F word. No, I can't find it. Here we go. Sorry. Let me know how this sounds. Good evening, residents of the great city of Ansonia. This is Mayor David Cassetti. Huh, that's pretty cool. This is WADS, Ansonia, okay. Stratford, Trumbull. All right, so uh, what else to go over? Uh, while we were away, or actually, this was right before we went away, a couple of, a uh, couple of, I don't know how to describe them. I'm just going to say dummies. A couple of dummies broke into a commercial building that's supposed to be being converted into apartments on uh, Main Street, West Main Street in Ansonia. Ansonia police released some video of the commercial burglary break-in back on, I believe this was December 13th. Let's uh, take a look. Let me know how the sound works and all that good stuff. Maximize that. Now, by the way, what we're looking at, where that alleged the suspect, I'm trying not to say anything that'll get me in trouble, but so the suspect, he is at the exit or entrance to the building. That's on the West Main Street side. This is directly across from the Ansonia train station. I don't believe any arrests have been made, at least that, not, not that I've heard, but I've been out of the loop. And I know where, what he's looking at, because that is where the Valley Indy used to be. We were on the third floor, so I would park right outside the store every day, come right through here, maybe take the stairs, take the elevator if I was hung over. And for some reason, I really want an answer to this. They covered our name. I mean, yeah, we moved out, but what kind of message you're sending there. Anyway, so if anybody knows this, or on call police. Obviously a lot of construction equipment there because in the process of converting that. Uh, the other thing going on there, the building they were coming out of, people had asked me, that has long vacant. Very briefly, it was a, a state office, and it was a place, I believe, if people had uh, like traumatic brain injuries and things like that, they were, it was an employment office where the, uh, people in there would help set them up with jobs in the community. But it had a flooding problem. They, they kind of came and went really fast. That office has been mostly vacant for a while. So that was going on. The other thing that was happening, let me see if I have any comments, because when I share the screen, I can't read the comments. No, I don't have any comments. This is kind of disturbing people. I thought I'd be inundated with comments. The other thing going on, and let me see if, uh, I guess I'll go back. Can I just go to the next one? I'm gonna stop sharing that. Couple of shootings 
while we're away in Ansonia, which is always disturbing. I wanted to share the official word from the police department on that. So this is released on uh, December 30th. I just see I have a comment. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate that. Volume on the video was clear. Good. That's what I'm, I appreciate that. Thank you and happy new year. So, okay. So this was released on December 30th. Uh, this is from uh, Chief Wayne Williams of the Ansonia Police Department on 1229 at approximately 147 PM. Officers responded to the area of Marion Grove Street for the report of shots fired. They found evidence of gunfire at the scene. No victims were located. Suspects fled the scene. No residents or vehicles were damaged by the gunfire. Detectives are checking it out and investigating. Then a few hours later, roughly two hours later, officers respond the same day. Officers responded to another report of shots being fired on Bridge Street between West Main Street and Main Street. And there were some photos of the damage posted to one of the community forums by a local resident. Preliminary investigation indicated that an exchange of gunfire took place involving two people shooting at each other. It does not appear any individuals were struck by gunfire, but several rounds went to local businesses and one car was hit. Suspects all fled the location. The scene was closed for several hours during the investigation. Several searches were conducted in the area and numerous items of evidence were located along with the vehicle that was seized. So that's all good news that uh, hopefully results in arrest warrants being drafted and uh, served on whoever did that. Several strong leads are being followed on suspects involved in this incident as detectives continue to investigate the incident. Anybody with information, call 203-735-1885. That's the Ansonia Police Department. Or if you go to their Facebook page, you can see the uh, tip line, the anonymous tip app. So I know in the Valley, as someone who's just reported on these various shootings that uh, happen, when you when they make an arrest and then you read the arrest warrant and the motives are always just really childish for some of these things. It's like someone insulted someone's girlfriend. That's literally, I think, been a cause of like half the shootings we've covered since 2009 uh, in the Valley. So that was going on. The other thing I thought uh, at the end of the year, for years now, we always try to do a yearly wrap up. Uh, I didn't do one this year because I thought Gene Falbo Sosnovich, who is the Valley Indie freelance reporter, did a really good job on her five stories. She came up with a, her personal list of the top five stories of the year. In case you didn't, uh, if in case you missed it, I will share it right now. See, it's very hard to do two things at once. It must be this one, the Valley Independent. Nope, that's a search thing. That's what I don't like about Streamer. When you go to share your screen, like Zoom, you can put it in the order you want to share. I haven't, that doesn't seem possible with StreamYard. Like the way that you have to share your Chrome tab, I find very disturbing. So uh, that was me up at midnight. Just a shout out for myself right there. <laughs> so Gene's top five stories of the year was that horrible story that turned out to have a somewhat uh, positive ending where a couple of people allegedly shot their dog like within a stone's throw of my home near uh, Coon Hollow Park uh, up there near Derby High School Middle School in the, in the Little League field. Uh, the dog uh, named Thunder, renamed Thunder, had to have a leg amputated but it's now been adopted and has a permanent family. So that's good. Gene said the number four story of 2022 was cyber theft in Seymour. That's something that is very, very uh, much under inv investigation at this point, but somebody tricked people in Seymour government and or the board of education to hand over $375,000 in what amounts to a very common uh, cyber crime targeting municipalities. Uh, we did a story uh, on that earlier in the year. Gene Pick for number three, a Derby father raises, uh, runs to raise awareness after a tragic loss. This was a story about a Derby couple who lost uh, their son at a very young age to a rare disease, runs every year to raise awareness and money to help find a cure. Uh, number two was the Ansonia Community Rallies for a Sick Girl. There was a little girl who uh, had an inoperable brain tumor and the school district in the city of Ansonia arranged for, she was a student at Mead School, arranged for a caravan, essentially to drive by the little girl's home to raise the spirits of her and her family. Uh, she unfortunately passed away. And then Jean picked as the number one story of 2022, another Ansonia story. I was, was just was going to yell at Jean for not uh, spreading the love in terms of where uh, the stories are going, what towns. But Let Roman Play, which was uh, 
A story that came out at the end of the year, magnet school kid couldn't play on Ansonia Middle School basketball team, uh, even though he said, hey, I go to a magnet school, but somehow that slipped through the bureaucracy, but the bureaucracy struck back, kicked them off the team because uh, they wanted to make room for one additional Ansonia Middle School player. So I thought that was a good job by Gene Fable Sosnovich. I, my top five would have been just made people mad, and I'm so sick of getting yelled at <laughs> on Facebook all the time by various politicians and their minions and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of infighting going on in, in, in the towns, and I would have picked some of that. But why? Why end the year that way? I thought Gene did a better job, so I am going with Gene's picks right there. What else do you want to talk about? I'm going to stop sharing that. Back to my stream yard. Uh, we talked about the knuckleheads. We talked about Ansonia shots fired. Gene's top five stories of the year. How about some meetings, right? So this is a day we're back from a break. Got to figure out what to cover this week. We have some stories held. Um, we have a story I'm going to publish tomorrow. Uh, wow, only five people watching. Facebook. Facebook video used to be the bomb, right? You could put anything on Facebook and they would just show it to your entire audience. Things have changed, which is another reason to please go to youtube.com slash at Valley Indy. Like us on YouTube, because I think I'm going to start doing all these on YouTube because I've had success with YouTube on my stupid podcast I do on the weekend about uh, movies, television, and things related to Stuttering John. So Facebook just doesn't show people video anymore, not like they used to. But all right, so so meetings we have coming up. You guys want to take a trip uh, to the various municipal websites to see what your elected officials are talking about? Do you want to see how your tax taxpayer dollars are being spent? Let's see. Let's try well, whatever comes up first here. Share the own. Oh, I did that. I did Christmas trees and derby. All right, let's do Seymour first. Let's go on Seymour. All right, so they got the board of select persons coming up. Hope that I shared that the correct way. Want to take a look at their agenda? Yeah, sure. Let's take a look at their agenda. Well, that might not go. Will that work? Let me see if that works. Hold on one second. I'm going to look over here to my, to my right. Does it still share that? Or do I have to go back? Can I just click on the tab? And does that work? Is everybody seeing an agenda right now? I'm about a 16-second delay looking at, me, looking at myself on another computer. I don't think that works. So what I will do is stop sharing that, go back to here, Present again, share the screen again, go over to my Chrome tab again, and share you the PDF. And that will probably work. Will it not give me 16 seconds to answer myself? Uh, also, I'm not as fat as this in real life, and I've shaved in real life, just so you people know. All right, so let's see what's going on. Seymour Board of Select Persons, they officially changed their name. They have, uh, wow. Let's see, they got discussion of possible action, spending some uh, federal dollars, ARP allocations. Seymour has been detailing how they're spending their money. Derby kind of has it. I don't know. Derby and Ansonia, I haven't seen as much, as much detail comparatively to the town of Seymour with how those dollars are being spent. But we got Patton, Ave Patton Avenue Drainage Improvement Project. No idea what that is, but I'm going to assume, ladies and gentlemen, that is money to be used to improve drainage on Patton Avenue. That is a wild guess by me. Central Office Relocation Project. They moved the old uh, Board of Education offices out of the uh, crappy old building there where the Naugatuck Valley Health District is. And uh, I, I, where did they move it? The high school, I think? I could be wrong. I'm not 100% sure, but that's going on. 18 Nor Avenue Tax Abatement. Not sure what that is. First Select Woman's Report. Seymour! What's in the report? Come on, let us know, Seymour. Uh, they have some appointments, tax refunds, public comment. All right, so a pretty routine meeting for the town of Seymour. And where do you want to go next? You want to, you want to check out Derby? What's going on in Derby? Let's see. Do have any meetings coming up in Derby? We're going to share the screen again. I already shared with you what to do with your Christmas tree. I don't know what else do people want from me. Uh, I talked about the, the trash and recycling, right? Can't get that information anywhere else, at least right now. Let's see, okay, uh, Sunday meeting. That's always sketchy, but it was canceled. Okay, good. Never trust the government when they meet on the weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Never, never, they're never up to good, up to any good. Opening bids and all that sketchy stuff by themselves, don't do that. All right, so Tuesday, January 3rd, we got a Board of Education meeting going on. I will open that agenda too. 
close that one. Let's take a look at what the, the Derby Board of Education is doing. This is scintillating content. I know it. Share the screen again. Go to my Chrome tab. Sorry, I have to speak that out or else I'll just go, uh, uh, uh. All right. Oh, you can do, they got a committee of the whole meeting Tuesday at 630. Let's see. Did they properly mark their executive session? Derby has been in this little thing where they're, uh, hopefully you're all not seeing a text message from my wife that just came through, but it's a picture of my cat. Uh, she's in the, she's upstairs with the flu. The dog and cat are laying, laying down next to her. Did they properly mark an executive session? They're like, oh, look, they did. Darn it, I was hoping to call out Derby Board of Education. Executive session to discuss appointment list of buyers and unpaid leave requests, resignations, and the superintendent is invited to attend. Sometimes some of these towns, they'll just say executive session if needed or executive session, and they just put it on there as a placeholder, which is, I mean, it's a little gray area in terms of the FOI letter of the law, but I will argue with you whoever's watching this, whatever six people, that it's certainly not in the spirit of the FOI Act to put an executive session on your agenda if you know what the topic is, but you just say, if needed. Uh, and, but credit to the Derby BOA, BOE for not doing that. I got some uh, student awards. That's always a good thing. We got a student representative report. Then the aforementioned executive sessions and then a whole bunch of administrator reports. I don't know, would you cover that meeting? This is where it always gets tricky. I'm one person. I have uh, four stories I can assign to Gene. That's the extent of the Valley Indies power at this point. And so I'm always thinking, Board of Eds are tough because they're a time commitment. So I'm always on the fence waffling as to whether or not to cover. Ideally we would, and when we had three full-timers, we would cover this, but it gets trickier. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing that. Any comments? Wow, we're not getting anything, huh? I got I to gotta, I gotta up my YouTube game. What, what do people like to talk about on YouTube? Alpha and beta males, like that type of stuff. Andrew Tate, should I just throw that name out there to get some views? I'm going to share the screen one more time. Let's see what's going on. In the city of Ansonia. <laughs> This is WADS, Sansonia, Stratford, Trumbull. Okay, let's see. They got their news. They got their meetings. Oh, public works organizational meeting. Might be a slow news week, ladies and gentlemen. Barring any of that, uh, arrests from the weekend crime or last week's crime uh, in Ansonia. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show people was that... Uh, and Sonia does a really good job of putting their board of aldermen meetings online. People should check that out. And also Seymour does a good job of putting its board of select persons meeting online. For some reason, they both use that like $300 million surveillance uh, system camera. I'm not sure why municipalities do that, but uh, kudos to them. One thing, when the Valley Indy launched in 2009, I was shocked that you couldn't even get local government meetings on cable. Like That was a thing when I was in high school in the 80s. I remember I ran the character generator when I was like in 10th grade at some town of Somers meeting, and I accidentally brought down an arrow on someone's head during the meeting, this town supervisor, and you know, you're in 10th grade, I thought it was the funniest thing that had ever happened. In fact, it was. It, it, it was the funniest thing that, that ever happened to me. So... Derby, get your meetings online. Let's go. Let's go, Derby. I'm a taxpayer. Had to go over the break and pay some back taxes on my uh, my car. I didn't even know I, I, was a, I was a tax delinquent. No, wait, that's the Ansonia PD commercial burglary thing. Ansonia Board of Aldermen. Let's just check out. Oh, we're, we're practicing the, uh, the YouTube here with the stream yard. Let's see what uh, president of the board, Josh Schuert, was up to at the last Board of Aldermen meeting last month. He looked like he has something to say. Uh, please identify yourself, name, and um, I'm not going to identify myself. Public record, and um, to me. you know we'll try to answer questions if we can on the spot, but it's not a, a Q and A. So, is there anyone from the public who? Whoa! Is oh, that was me? Uh, interested in speaking button. to the board of aldermen? Going once. Oh, and this is on Zoom, not in person. I thought they went anyone back else to in from person. The public who wishes to speak. I want to know uh, what's up with those guitars. Third and final call. Anyone from the public? Seeing none, we will close the public session. 
move on to the public official session. Uh, Mayor Cassetti, we'll start with you. Good evening, President Short, members of the Board of Aldermen, oh, residents is that of the too great loud? city of People Anstonia. should let me know. I want to say how very proud I am of the 2022 Class S Champion Chargers football team. I want to take a moment to recognize Coach Brockett, all the coaches, staff, and players for a phenomenal season. I am proud of everyone. I also want to thank our wonderful superintendent, Dr. Joe DeBacco, who is a champion in his own right for our students and players. Thank you, Joe, for a wonderful work you do and for your strong support of our students and players all year. Let's have a round of applause for the accomplishments of the team's oh, Antonio's 21st football title. Please come and celebrate. Wait, I think I have I have applause too. Well, congratulations to Antonio Football for another football championship. That's something else. Celebrate this championship with the Charger Parade this Saturday at 10.30 a.m. Keep in mind, this is December 13th. It seeing happened. Seeing you there, it, let's go Chargers. Recently, we celebrated some big wins for projects as well that we have been working on for several years. As That's true. Right before we went on vacation, the Valley Indy and various news outlets were inundated with grant announcements. Now we're down to one person. Wow, man. That hurts. I don't like you, Mark Zuckerberg. I don't like you at all. But I didn't publish any of them because some of them I, I was just confused about. There was con uh, contra contradicting information in some cases from what I was getting to from the state compared to what I was getting locally. So I put them aside, but we will we will get to them. Just wanted to confirm what was happening was actually what's happening and, and nobody was trying to spin it or use it or to, you know, do political stuff. As you know, my staff and I will, as this board and many other boards have- But hey, since nobody's watching, Lord knows Ansonia, Derby, Seymour need, needs federal funding. And there's, there's issues, especially Derby and Ansonia in the old factories. It kind of blows my mind that it's taken this long to, to get this money. Like, it's just, it's insane to me. Because when you look at downtown Ansonia, you see it despite the big albatross of the former factories there, uh, things are going on. You see Route 34 finally happening. I think uh, the federal spigot should, should have been turned on a long time ago, right? I have worked collaboratively to support development in our residents' quality of life. We have a great team working together that has been able to come up with a plan for acquisition, assessment, remediation and demolition of two parcels that represent our future and together from the largest contiguous brownfield properties in the valley shw and acb ansonia copper and brass are the future of ansonia and without your efforts to acquire these parcels we would be looking at those fallow properties for many years to come through our efforts we are going to demolish all but one building on SHW, provide for an access road and site pads, replace or renovate the bridge and truck access for Ansonia Copper and Brass, and rehab and renovate two buildings on these properties for future manufacturing tenants. We have been able to secure millions of dollars towards these efforts, and again, I want to thank if you're watching and you can drop a comment to let me know you can hear this. Thank my staff and this board for their hard work. Once revitalized, these or is it blasting out your headphones? That's the kind of stuff I need to know. These properties will generate tax dollars and jobs that are so vital to our economic health. We also received funding for 501 East Main Street, where we already have a public private partnership to redevelop our downtown properties with Shaw. The funding we recently applied for and received will help remediate and demolish. This will set the stage for 200 units of residential apartments and over 20,000 square feet of retail spot space. 
all exciting news and more forward progress and recharging our downtown. I wish you all a blessed holiday season with your family and friends, and I hope to see you on Main Street this Saturday at 1030. Thank Again, you. God December bless you all. 13th. And God bless Ansonia. God bless you, you Ansonia and uh, Mayor Cassetti. So, all right, that was, a, I, I'll have to have pretty soon Mayor Cassetti, Sheila O'Malley, and I guess John Marini on, or maybe Josh Seward, because I find all the grant money stuff a little confusing. And I, you know, I, I'm, I've sort of lost track of which building is which and what money is being used for which building and what the intent is to future development. I'm, I'm sort of uh, lost in the woods at this point. So maybe having them on will clarify it, you know? I think the city's got to maybe, at one point they had like the Ansonia recharged map because it gets a little, a little confusing. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. I just wanted to try out... Uh, Streamyard, I think. Ad Thank you, Adam, for your for your help. I do appreciate that because you're saying it comes in perfectly clear. So maybe this is a tool I can use going forward. Although, like one thing, it is difficult to manage the comments, talk, and then find out what I want to share. Don't know if that's a ideal uh, situation for people out there viewing. I only have three comments, I guess. Does anybody have any questions for me, the Valley Indie guy? Ask me anything. I think I would have picked uh, Olsen Drive if I had, if I had done my top five stories of the year, Olsen Drive would have been way up there. Just, uh, the transformation that's happened on Olsen Drive really against the odds in Ansonia, you know, I, I've only lived up in the valley for I don't know how long at this point. I don't know, 10 years, 30 years. I must be getting the flu. Why am I purple pink? Do I look purple pink to everybody? That's disturbing. But anyway, I remember we launched the Valley India day early because I think somebody had been stabbed to death uh, in on Olsen Drive, either in the Riverside Apartments or on the property thereof. And there was there was a lot going on in terms of violent crime. There was a spate of violent crime happening on Olsen Drive. And then, and then that whole period, 2009, 2010, there was a lot going on uh, in Derby and Ansonia. And it was basically three people. When I look back, it was like one group of people. But, uh, you know, and then at, at one point, you know, Olsen Drive, they, they tore down, it was so outdated and gross and nobody should have been, should have been living there. It was outdated, uh, uh, you know, affordable housing or low-income housing that was set up like a jail, right? It had outlived its usefulness by decades. But HUD was saying like, no, you're going to put something back there. You know, it's going to be townhouses and this, that, and the other thing. And clearly the city of Ansonia, I think even under Mayor Della Volpe, wasn't particularly keen on putting the same thing back. You know, and the modern philosophy with housing like that is to spread it naturally through a community, not have it sit in one place, right? Which isn't good for anybody, the people living there or the community in general, you know what I mean? People, uh, it's, it's like putting a, it's bizarre. It's a bizarre way and it's an outdated way of thinking. So I really thought it was just to be a field forever. I thought nothing would ever be built there, but you know, you got to give Ansonia credit. I know there's controversy out there about the process by which all this happened, but there's something being built on Olsen Drive. I never thought that would happen. So regardless of your opinion of it, I think it was definitely a story of the year. I also i am of the opinion, right? Nobody's watching. I can say this and whatever. I, I probably wouldn't even be here next year. Like the lawsuit that was brought against the city by a resident. I know there's a lot of bitterness that I see on uh, Facebook from Cassetti supporters. Obviously, he's a hugely popular mayor in the city. But I mean, all right, take it as like a serial killing reporter. You had this debate going on and it got tested in the courts and Team Cassetti won it. So from my perspective as an, as an outsider, that's a good thing. It's that's why courts exist. You know, that's, it's set up so you can test it. You have a, a, a policy debate and good, bad, or indifferent, the courts are the place where things like that can be worked out. You can argue, oh, it's, you know, a waste of taxpayer money and all that stuff, but I don't know. It's part of America, baby. That's all I got. Nobody's asking any questions. Thank you to Adam, my producer, Adam Coppola. <laughs>
for helping me out and letting me know I can be heard. I will now be editing out anything controversial I just said to because I'm a coward. All right. Happy New Year, everybody. Again, uh, anything I said can't be used against me because I'm obviously coming down with the flu. My wife has it. My dog has it. My son has it. My daughter has it. I'm sure it's coming for me. Shoo, shoo, go away, flu.